Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm going to be sharing two card projects that I created for the rabbit hole designs using a fun beach stamp set. I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful background with inks, a few ways that you can use your floral pattern papers, and how to create two different sized cards with this larger image. I am going to be using this Beechen stamp set today, along with some papers from the Spring Florals collection, which can also bring a nice summer feel to your projects. I'm also going to be using the Back Alley stencil, which is a great rough brick stencil that I've enjoyed using. We're going to create two card projects today with this stamp set, so let's go ahead and get started. For the Slimline card, I'm going to be creating a little beach scene using Distress Oxide inks and the stamped images. I'm going to start by masking off the top portion of this cardstock, and I'm going to create the sky with weathered wood ink. This creates a soft gray around the edges. I'm going to blend this in with some salvaged patina, and it's going to make this beautiful blue sky above our ocean. I am leaving the center white. This is going to give us an illusion of a sun. Now we're going to create the ocean. I've moved the mask to cover the sky, and I've torn another piece of repositionable tape to mask off the area for the sand. I'm going to fill in this area with salty ocean ink, and then I'll blend in some salvaged patina. I'm adding darker ink on the edges, and I'm going lighter as I reach that white point in the center. Just like I did with the sky, I want to create the look of a sun reflection in the ocean. The last part is the sand. I'm going to place the other half of that torn repositionable tape mask below the ocean. Now I am placing it about an eighth of an inch below where I added the ink for the ocean because I want a white area that's going to represent the foam that flows up along the edge of the waves. For the sand, I'm going to be using tea dye ink, and then I'm gonna come in with some vintage photo around the edges. The vintage photo is going to create a nice vignette look and create some shading along the edges of the sand. After I've added the vintage photo, I'll come back in with the lighter shade of brown and just blend those inks together. All right, now we're going to remove the mask and we have a really simple beach scene created with ink. Now here's a quick little tip for you. If you did not leave enough little white area there to create a reflection in the ocean, you can bring in a sand eraser and remove some of the ink and create an even wider reflection. You can use any ink in your collection for this. It's just a really simple way to make that stamped image stand out on what looks like a beach background. All right, we're gonna start working on the images for this card. I have already stamped the images on three separate papers. Two are on white cardstock, and one is on the soft yellow floral patterned paper. I'm going to be paper piecing the hat to make it look like a fabric pattern, and that floral paper is perfect for this. I'm just gonna use some scissors and fussy cut around the two portions of the hat. Now, I'm not gonna get super detailed and cut around the flower or some of the other images, because I am going to be layering a flower and the drinks on top of this. I'm just gonna cut around the outside of the black line and cut these two pieces apart so that the band on the hat still shows through the two patterned pieces. When this is all cut out, these pieces are going to fit together perfectly, just like a puzzle. I'm going to cut out the two drinks with the sunglasses and flower. Again, I'm just using some scissors and I'm fussy cutting around the black lines. The flower is really easy to cut out. And for the drinks, all I need to do is cut around the portion of the sunglasses and the pineapple because I used the die to cut out the rest of the image. Now to cut around the pineapple, just hold your scissors in place and wiggle the paper. You don't need to be perfect here. I'm just gonna leave a white border and it's gonna look just fine once it's layered on top of that hat. Now I'm going to do some shading of these images with alcohol markers. 
I am going to speed this up a bit so that you don't have to sit here all day and watch me color these images. But I am going to give you a few tips along the way. I'm starting with the coconut drinks and I'm going to add some gray shading to the white portion of the coconut. Now to soften this up, I'm going to bring in a blender tool. The blender tool allows me to push the gray color into the shaded areas and it softens the harsh lines while still keeping a little bit of shadow on the images. So that way we still have a white portion of the coconut, but we have some shading with the gray. For the outer portion of the coconut, I'm going to be blending a couple of brown hues. I'm starting with a lighter color in the center, and then I'm going to add some shadows along the edges. I'm also going to use my marker tip to add some little brush strokes to mimic the hairs on the coconut. This is going to help add some texture when I start to bring in the other brown shades. The other set of browns that I'm going to be using has a red hue, and this is going to be used to deepen the shadows along the edges and add some more texture to the image. You can see here, as I'm going around the edges, I'm not doing a straight line, I'm actually doing more of a brush stroke to create the look of little hairs on the coconut. Now, after I blend some of the mid-tones and the lighter colors, I'm gonna bring back that other brown hue and I'm gonna deepen the shadows some more. I want to go ahead and bring in the mid-tones and the lighter hue and I'm gonna blend all of these colors together. For the pineapples and the drink, I'm going to mix some light yellow and golden yellow. After I've shaded the pineapple, I am going to add some darker tones on the drink. And I'm gonna do this with some muted browns. The muted brown blends well with the golden yellow and creates a nice deep shading around the edges. I'm also going to use that coral on the umbrellas and the flower. Whenever I'm coloring images, I like to repeat colors throughout the image. Now the flower is going to stay predominantly white. I just wanna add a little bit of coral on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade the flower and shade the umbrellas with some darker corals. And then I'm gonna go ahead and color those straws and sunglasses. Now I want the straw and the sunglasses to be pink. The straws are very small, so I just need a little bit of color. I'm gonna use a lighter pink to color the entire image. And then I'll come in with the darker tone and I'll add a little bit of shading along the sides. The sunglasses are also going to be pink. When I'm coloring images like this, I try to form visual triangles with the colors. I have some pink and coral tones in the flower and in the straws and in the umbrella. And now I'm adding it to the sunglasses. Using the same colors in all three items is gonna help give some balance to the image and it forms a nice visual triangle on that stamped design. Now for the center of the sunglasses, I debated on coloring them black, but I decided that gray was probably going to be a better color choice for this image. I've gone ahead and shaded the center with a lighter color of gray, and then I'm going to go around the edges with the darker gray. I'm going to bring in the mid-tone in the center and I'm going to be blending that darker gray with the lighter gray. And you're going to see here that I'm going to leave a little bit of the area, that light gray, to form what almost looks like a reflection on the sunglasses. All right, before I put my markers away, I wanna add some shading to the pieces of the hat that we cut out of that patterned paper. And I'm going to color that sea star. Now we have a lot of color on here and I wanna keep the sea star pretty simple. I'm just gonna add a little color around the edges and add some color in the center. And then just like I did with the coconut, I'm going to use my blender tool to blend and soften these colors. This almost gives me a watercolor-like look. It adds some color to the sea star, but it's not too predominant of a color that it's going to throw this design off balance. Now, even though the hat already has some color because of the patterned paper, I do wanna add shading with marker because I want it to look like the other images. I'm just going to go around the edges of the hat and around the images that are stamped on the hat, like the pineapples and the flower. 
this is going to look like we have shadows below the layers once I start adding those other items over the top of it. All right, now everything is ready for the card. Let's go ahead and put it together. I have already adhered the background onto a slimline card base, and I've stamped a sentiment in the lower right corner. This sentiment is on that beach and stamp set. There's actually a couple of sentiments on there that are super cute, and they would work for this card. Now I'm going to adhere all the pieces of this image together. The larger image itself is going to be placed down onto the card with foam tape. And then I'm going to adhere all the hat pieces in place with some liquid adhesive. I love how the pattern paper looks on that hat. It turned out so much better than I expected. This is a great way to use up your patterned paper, especially if you don't like coloring larger images. I'm gonna go ahead and layer the rest of the pieces on this image in place with foam tape. These are all going to fit together just like a puzzle on that image. Once all the pieces are in place, we're gonna add three little opal looking pearls. These just give a little bit of shimmer to the card and they're just fun to add to the design. Now, our first card's complete. I love how this came together and how it looks just like a little beach scene. Since this was such a large stamp set, I know that many of you plan on using it on a slimline card, but I want to show you how you can use this on a standard A2 size card. So I've already gone ahead and shaded the image just like I did for the first card. So I'm not going to show you that process all over again. You can see that this one is only partially stamped. So it's going to be able to fit on the smaller card design. I've also grabbed a few more supplies like some floral pattern papers and cardstock for my card. I'm going to start by adding a little bit of texture to the white cardstock using the back alley stencil. I'm going to be using some opaque texture paste to create the look of broken brick. Now this is really easy to do and that beautiful white on white just gives us a little bit of texture on the card without adding any more color to the design. Now once the texture paste is dried, I can go ahead and assemble the card. I'm going to layer the blue pattern paper onto the background. This is such a fun floral pattern and that color reminds me of the ocean. Across the base of the card, I'm placing a one inch strip of that yellow patterned paper that I used for the hat. Now that the pattern paper is in place, I need to decide how to cut this partial image. I could cut the image flush with the right side of the cardstock, but I hate to lose the sunglasses and part of the pineapple. Since most of the image was already cut with a die, I'm just going to fussy cut around the rest of the piece. I think this partial image would be great inside of a frame, on the edge of a shaker card, or inside of a circular shape. All right, now that the image is cut out, I'm going to layer the remaining pieces onto the card and place this image onto the brick background using some foam tape. For the sentiment, you can use one of the phrases from the Beechen stamp set but I'm going to use the Scripty U stamp set instead with a layered word die. I'm going to heat emboss the statement, make life fun onto some blue gray cardstock. After I have heat set the powder, I'm going to add it to my card with the word U. This has been cut from some cardstock that matches the color of the coconuts. The heat embossed sentiment strip is going to be placed below it and tucked under the stamped image. I think this is the perfect statement for this whimsical summer card. Now I'm going to add a few embellishments and our second card is complete. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the two cards we created today using that Beechen stamp set. Now this first design is such a beautiful beach scene on a slimline card base. And with that large stamp set, most of you are probably planning on building some type of slimline card. Now our second card is a bit more whimsical. We added some floral papers and a brick background and those cute little drinks with the pink sunglasses. 
This is a great little summer card design that you could give to one of your friends. All right, I'm gonna share a few photos of these cards so that you can see all of the lovely details. These cards are simple to create with a single stamp set, some alcohol markers and some inks. The masking techniques for the beach scene are easy to replicate and can be recreated on any size card. I love how versatile this stamp set is and how I was able to create two unique card designs with a bright summery feel. I hope that today's card making projects inspired you and that you plan on trying a few of these techniques. If you have any questions about the projects or the supplies used, feel free to post those in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.